It's a bear. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Got the uh, live deer field cam up. Look at that clear blue water right there. You can see the barracudas. A uh, nice little school of barracuda. I don't know if it's a nice school, but <laughs> a school of barracuda sitting right there. There's our look downs here over here, and not quite sure what that's in the background, but uh, what a beautiful day out there. Not to mention, it's like 72 degrees out, man. What great weather we're having right now in South Florida. And to all my South Florida peeps, Happy New Year's as well. And uh, uh, I think we're going to have a, a good year here in Florida. I mean, business is just off the hook. Uh, the restaurants here in Lauderdale by the Sea, South, South Florida. I mean, every place I go to is busy. The, the roads are busy. Uh, you would never think that there was anything wrong. I got to say that our governor did a wonderful job here in Florida opening things up like they should have. And um, I think that uh, next year or two, we're going to see a lot of heads roll out there uh, in some of the uh, blue states and some of the red states that made really poor decisions in the year 2020. <clears throat> Not that they haven't been making poor decisions for decades already, but really poor decisions in 2020. Uh, if anyone saw the uh, uh, the Rogan interview, Joe Rogan interview, I normally don't ever watch him, but someone turned it on. I was mesmerized by Joe Rogan's interview this week uh, with the uh, one doctor that uh, uh, was involved with inventing this stuff. Well, as I said, my, my, my theme for the year uh, is going to be think for yourself and question authority. I know it's Timothy Leary, love or hate the guy. Uh, it's one of the things that really was instrumental in making me the person who I am today as a, as a young man. I saw this, I think I was in my teens when I saw this quote, think for yourself and question authority. And uh, it's unique because, uh, you know, your parents never told you to uh, <laughs> question authority. Maybe think for yourself. But uh, uh, in this, it's not, it's not very common out there. People don't often think for themselves. People don't question authority anymore. And I think that's why we're in such a trouble we are, whether it's... Uh, uh, whether it's uh, pandemics or economics or politics, you name it. Uh, the, tr the reason we are in such trouble is because of apathy, letting other people think for us and never questioning authority. That's very dangerous, folks, and it's got us where we are today. Uh, another little uh, saying here, or I'm going to say a quote from Alexander. I'm not even going to try that one. Hold on, let me try it. Souls in Hittinson. <laughs> okay. Uh, the simple step of courage of, of a courageous individual is not to take part in the lie. One word of truth outweighs the world. And this is absolutely true. Uh, probably one of the reasons I got kicked off of Facebook, my 12-year account, is because uh, I had the courage to, you know, and, and I knew it might happen. I knew it might happen, and but it did. <laughs> they threw me off, but I would, they threw me off for uh, hateful, and uh, I've mentioned this many times here, but it still pisses me off. Uh, screw, screw FB, uh, uh, screw the Zuck, and uh, screw the metaverse. <laughs> uh, in my opinion right now, it's completely <clears throat> lost my business forever pretty much uh, because of censorship. Uh, but no less, um, you know, it, it, people are afraid to lose things. Like, like there's a lot of people on uh, social media that won't get into political conversations or anything because they're afraid to lose their accounts. You know, you kind of can't blame them, but, but again, it, it's not very courageous to not speak your mind and not speak what you believe the truth, as long as you're doing it civilly and you're not being an asshole about it or, or, or hurtful. Or, I mean, I don't say hurtful, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, 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 the simple step of a courageous individual is not take part in the lie. That's a fact, folks. One word of truth outweighs the world. And again, question authority and think for yourself. Well, let's take a look at, uh, uh, now that I've got my, uh, uh, my, my lesson for the day done, <laughs> let's uh, look at spot prices and see what's going on. I thought we were going to see a little more monkey hammering after yesterday's monkey hammering, but uh, I guess not. not. Not today so far. Uh, in fact, we're up a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, markets here. Currently sitting at 1811.54, and uh, a low of 1800 overnight. Uh, that was probably yesterday, and a high of 1812.50, uh, high 1812.59. So we're just close to that high right now. Uh, silver currently just busted that $23 mark again, again. Uh, it's kind of been hovering back and forth, up and down uh, there for uh, what a couple weeks now, at least or more. Uh, low of 20, longer actually, 22.67 a low, that was yesterday. I believe that was probably around yesterday's close. Uh, I better look though, and a high of 23.06, currently sitting at 23.04. Uh, platinum, look at that, that's the real mover today, up $21. Um, and uh, 949.50 would be the low, about 950 and a high of 985. And we're not too far off from that high. And, and I'm not going to really talk about palladium too much. What a crazy metal palladium was though last month, huh? Uh, for the year, actually, man, that thing came down. Uh, what was it, 2,500, 3,000, or even higher at one point? 
Uh, no less, we're not going to talk about it because hardly anybody buys it. And uh, if more people bought it, I'd probably uh, start adding it into my conversations here. But again, we probably sell one ounce of palladium for every thousand ounces of gold we sell, <laughs> literally, not, not exaggerating there. Um, let's take a look at where these markets kind of got monkey. Well, let's see, where are the green line today? That's yesterday, and we knew exactly what happened yesterday. Take a look at that. In the New York markets, uh, opening mo Monday morning markets, as typical, really, in Monday, mo well, ha late, as of late, uh, that's when the monkey hammering occurred, but kind of the opposite here, up again today. I think this is just attempts uh, to knock the price down below that 23 and attempts to, it's just repeated attempts uh, to, to knock prices down. And it's not been in our typical monkey hammering hours, uh, which have usually been on Sunday nights in slowly traded markets like Globex or uh, um, in the Monday morning early or during holiday. Uh, I mean, we had some holiday trading here this last couple of weeks and we really didn't see the monkey hammer. Uh, that I expected. So I suspect that uh, silver and gold are holding their own against these uh, big commercial short positions. Uh, probably has a lot to do with the physical when it comes to silver. Um, gold, uh, probably the same as well. Although I don't think there's a, 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 I think there's more above ground available gold than there is above ground available silver. Uh, I, that's just a wild guess on my part though. Uh, let's take a look at the, well again we can see the gold is up here uh, since this morning in New York NYMEX. I suspect exactly, see how these lines flatten out, happens in the morning generally speaking. This looks like it might happen in London as well. Uh, started to fall in London before the New York open uh, market, but that's another crooked market. Besides crooked comics, you got your crooked London markets as well. Uh, and then kind of even out for the rest of the day and that's kind of what we've been seeing for the last two or three months is uh, the markets are getting monkey hammered down. Uh, mostly in the, in the mornings uh, when New York opens and then uh, kind of around noontime it kind of flattens out, the line flattens out. I think you'll see silver pretty much the same way right here. Uh, take a look at yesterday, same thing. Uh, monkey hammering is occurring, you know, the big monkey hammering is occurring at uh, uh, New York uh, in the mornings uh, in the crooked comics markets and occasionally in the London markets as well. Not so much in silver, mostly in gold though. Silver is mostly screwed around with in the uh, in New York crooked comics market, uh, not the uh, uh, London markets where, where, where they do mess around with gold more so. <clears throat> Let's, and, and as you can see, like I said, after they're done monkey hammering in the mornings, uh, there seems to be like some uh, consistency to this. It's been happening every morning for the last uh, couple months. Uh, but on the flip side, we've seen it also recover from, the, from these morning monkey hammerings as well. Uh, so we're seeing it recover and bounce back up to that $23 level. We haven't seen it get, you know, it, it's gone down to $22.50 silver a little bit, $22. You know, I think 2250, 2260, it's been getting hammered down there in these mornings. But for, but for whatever reason, I think a lot has to do again with physical availability, above ground physical supplies, uh, and a lot of things going on in the market with silver that uh, it's just recovering very well after the uh, morning monkey hammer. Well, let's take a look at the stock market. Just, you know, it's always nice to kind of see. One day we're going to click this page and it's going to be a sea of red here and it's going to be three, three, digit, three digit numbers and a lot of this stuff. Well, maybe not so much in the S&P, a three digit number would be pretty devastating, uh, but uh, well, maybe not so much. But look, uh, you got green right here, which is what we've been expecting for a long time. But when this market turns, it's going to turn big. And as I said, it's going to pull the price of silver and gold down with it as well temporarily uh, or typically has. 2008 when the stock market took a giant crap. Uh, housing market, when that bubble took a giant crap, it took gold and silver down with it in the paper markets. Uh, fortunately, or unfortunately, you, you could not buy uh, silver at those lower prices in 2008 when the, when the stock and housing market crashed. Um, silver and gold prices dropped dramatically, but again, uh, there was none available. All of a sudden, it just wasn't available. Uh, and when I say it wasn't available, wait times were, were, they were talking months on wait times in 2008 on some products. Uh, on silver and gold products. Um, gold Eagles, gold was uh, what, sub $1,000 and Gold Eagles were bringing, uh, geez, about a $200 premium, just like they were last year with gold almost double the price. Uh, and uh, silver, uh, I remember generic silvers, there were buys, offers to buy, uh, and there were se people selling a spot plus $5 wholesale, wholesale. Uh, for uh, silver one ounce generics. I think Eagles were even more at the time. 
so it had, had gotten that crazy because when the when the gold and silver price uh, dropped with the rest of the greatest bubble of all time, again it was paper price that dropped. You, the metal just wasn't available. People weren't selling it at that level. Availability was pretty much nil. All right? So. Uh, and the price that it was trading for with the premiums was near the price it was before it uh, had fall, uh, you know, fell uh, because of the bubble. Uh, and we're going to see that again, probably. We're going to see the greatest bubble of all time, um, you know, take a giant crap as well. Will it be like 2008? That's what I've been asking myself for some time. I really don't know. Um, you know, you would think that, that uh, uh, the powers to be out there, central bankers and, uh, well, let's not talk about governments, but central bankers, the uh, smarter powers to be, uh, would have learned their lesson in 2008 and uh, 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 kind of find a way to, when they get these huge bubbles is to slowly deflate them instead of let them just like pop overnight, kind of what we had in 2008. So, but you know, neither one is good. Whether you de completely deflate a bubble slowly over time is, is probably just as bad as letting it pop overnight. And as I've said over and over, these people have never, uh, governments and across the world and central bankers across the world have never fixed the problem since 2008. They've just accelerated the amount of plasma, I'm going to say M1, M2, I'm going to call M1, M2 plasma, uh, uh, plasma into the uh, uh, patient that was bleeding out in 2008. The patient's never been fixed, which is our economy, world economy, not just the U.S. economy, but the world economy. It's never been fixed since then, folks. All they've done is just pump new money into it, more plasma, more plasma, and the patient is just still leaking out through the band-aids, you know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, uh, never fix the problem, and that's why when we, you know, we're, we're going to see, we're going to see issues here, there's no doubt about it. It's just a matter of, not if, it's a matter of when. Uh, good new report done by uh, Ted Butler, January 3rd report for you guys that are subscribers out there. If you're not a subscriber, unfortunately, you can't read these reports, but uh, uh, and I'm not really going to read them to you, per se, unless it's stuff that's pretty much out there that Ted talks about. Uh, Ted does mention that the, uh, uh, the, the loss for the big short positions on COMEX is down to, I think he said, $9.5 uh, billion, I'm sorry. Uh, so they're down to a $9.5 billion. That's uh, one of the cool things about his reports is he keeps a running, uh, a running uh, figure of what the uh, big short positions would be currently losing. Uh, in uh, you know when the COT reports come up, uh, and I think this week he said the the combined shorts uh, in silver right now are at a 9.5 billion dollar loss. They were much higher than that at one time, and a little bit lower when we were down in that 21 dollar silver area. I think they had gotten as low as uh, being an eight and a half billion dollar loss. Uh, but no less, these short positions, the way they sit right now, are at huge losses. Uh, so it behooves them to try to monkey hammer these markets down substantially. And as we've talked about, Ted Butler mentioned that uh, both uh, Bank of America could possibly be uh, one of the largest short positions in silver out there. And I think he said they're leveraged. They borrowed the, uh, the they borrowed the silver. It's a derivative, uh, and uh, uh, very. You got to wonder: Are they that stupid that if, if they indeed do have that short position, which they probably do, uh, according to the opinions that I'm seeing out there? Uh, then, man, they're, they're setting themselves up either for uh, a huge, huge uh, failure here. So, um, anyways, that's been the news of the week. Everybody and their brothers talking about it. And uh, Ted Butler is the one that actually discovered it. So he needs to get the creds out there, in my opinion. Although a lot of people like to take credit for other people's work. Uh, pretty common in the gold and silver. Looks like the gold and silver talking head space. Well, um, good article out here by GATA.org, Pam and Russ Martins. There's news blackout on banks that got Fed emergency repo loans. Uh, and I'll, I'll read this to you real quick. And let's see. Four days ago, the Federal Reserve released the names of the banks that had received, it's a short, short article here, received $4.5 trillion in cumulative loans in the last quarter of 2019 under its emergency repo loan operation for a liquidity crisis that has yet to be credibly explained. Now, folks, here's the key right here, that right there, 2019. Um, there's going to be a lot of talk out there, officials, you know, government officials, banking officials, uh, talking heads in corporate media. Uh, give me one second here. And, uh, oops, <clears throat> sorry about that. Oh, man, got to sip of coffee here, okay. Mm. So these corporate talking news heads and uh, uh, all the suck-ups <laughs> to the officials out there, they're, they're going to tell you that, that it's not their faults. It's not the faults of the central bankers. It's not the faults of government. It's not the fault, uh, the economy, I'm saying. 
they're, they're going to they're going to blame the fault of the economy on the critter 19 that happened in 2020. But the truth of the matter, folks, is they've never fixed it. It's their fault. You want if we see a major we're not if when we see this major economic crash, you can blame both parties, the blue and the red party. You can also blame the officials that work for government. You can also blame the central bankers uh, because, again, they've never fixed anything since 2008. We are in a major crisis, which uh, Pam and Russ Martins point, point out right here. We are in a major crisis in 2019. With, most people have forgotten about this. Most people never even knew about this. This is technical bank stuff right here, a little bit over most people's heads. But we were in serious trouble in 2019 before the critter came along. Uh, but this critter is going to be a great excuse for them to uh, pass the blame off, off of any, anybody but themselves. And the truth of the matter is, is the critter, uh, you know, did make things a little bit harder. I mean, of course it would, you know, because people are not going to show up to work. There's not going to be people that are going to uh, have some issues. Um, very few, uh, quite frankly. But to complicate, make matters worse was the reaction. And, and how they handled the Critter 19 in 2020, how governments handled it in 2020, both blue and red, how the, uh, um, uh, how the uh, central bankers handled that situation. But I kind of think they knew what was going on, and it provides, again, provides a great scapegoat for their fuck-ups since 1913. That's the Fed I'm talking about. And, uh, of course, uh, a great scapegoat for government. Government's always looking for a scapegoat to put the blame on for shit they fucked up. And that's exactly what they did with Critter 19 by, by uh, uh, all the closures and all the other stuff is they screwed up big time, folks. They're going to blame it on the Critter, but it really is their fault. Remember that come election time, too, as well. Um, and I don't care what party it is. Make sure that you're voting for someone that's uh, not an imbecile. Uh, and again, the reason that we, we get imbeciles in office and the reason that we get imbeciles running our lives is because we don't think for ourselves anymore. We don't question authority. We, we, we suspect, we expect that these people are, are actually smart and looking out for our best interests. I don't believe that's always the case, folks. Uh, good, article, uh, good article by Charles Hugh Smith, um, again, talks about, this is economic and political stuff I'm talking about, folks, and it ties into the price of pre you know, precious metals, gold and silver. Gold and silver has always been a go-to place when in times of uncertainty, in times of, I mean, I'm not making this stuff, all of you got to uh, stuff up. You, it's history, man. All you got to do is look at history. Gold and silver has been around for 5,000 years. It's been coveted by, still is coveted by central banks. What do you think the central bankers put, have in their vaults? It's not, you know, I don't know how much we have in our vaults here in the United States. I don't even know how much gold we own, by the way. Even if we own, if, if we even own gold anymore. If, uh, years ago, GATA.org said that the United States had leased out all our gold, but we'll see. Uh, but what do the central banks supposedly hold in their, in their vaults? Gold. Uh, Chinese have been buying what? Their central bankers have been buying what? Gold. The Russians have been buying what? Gold. All right. Um, I don't, except for the United States, I don't think we've added any gold to our, our portfolios, which is kind of sad if you think about it. Uh, but uh, uh, central bankers all over the world, uh, what do they add? Gold. All right. So gold and silver is very important in times of uncertainty. And man, are we in times of uncertainty and all kinds of, uh, we're in the greatest bubble of all times as well. So we're in the g boat times of uncertainty. Uh, we have to talk about this kind of stuff when it comes to gold and silver. Uh, good, again, good article by Charles Hugh Smith. Uh, what seems so permanent for uh, 13 years will be real, revealed as shifting sand, and what seems so real for 13 years, uh, 13 long years will be revealed as an illusion. Magical thinking isn't optimism, optimism, it is folly. Predictions are hard, especially about the future, but let's look at what we already know about 2022. Viewed from the Earth orbit, 2022 is the year 14 of extend and pretend, too big to fail, too big to jail, and year two of global supply chains breaks and energy shortages. The essence of extend and pretend is to substitute income earned from increases in productivity, real prosperity, with a debt, a simulation of prosperity that doesn't solve the real problems. It simply adds a new and fatal problem. Since productivity hasn't expanded across the spectrum, neither has income or prosperity. And again, folks, it's what I said. Since 2008, they have fixed absolutely nothing. Um, productivity sucks. Um, um, you know, pr even the stock market, if you take a look at it, why are these stocks going up most of them? They're not going up because Apple makes a great new phone. Apple hasn't made great shit in a long time. They're not going up because uh, 
Uh, Snapple just came out with a new flavor of tea. Now it's for you old school guys. <laughs> and they're selling the shit out of it at stores. They're going up because there's so much cheap, easy money out there just flooding into that sector. Uh, so these are not even profitable companies for the most part, in my opinion. They're just companies that people are unloading, unleashing large amounts of money, looking for any kind of return uh, that these companies promise. Uh, so that's exactly what uh, he talks about here. All that happened over the past 13 years, he's talking about since 2008, is that debt, money, borrowed against future productivity and gains in energy consumption, funded illusions of prosperity in all three sectors, households, enterprise, and government. He nails it right there, folks. Uh, the explosion of debt and interest due on the debt could not occur if interest rates still topped 10%, as they did 40 years ago in the 1980s, uh, in the early to mid-1980s. We couldn't add tens of trillions of, uh, give me one second here, let me close it up a little bit. Nope. We couldn't add tens of trillions of dollars yin, yon, and euros in new debt unless interest rates were pushed down to near zero. For the government, the wealthy and corporations only, of course, debt surfs still pay 7, 10%, 15, 19, et cetera, at the time in 1980. Uh, the $100 US bill, uh, the US dollar bill, good old Benjamin, protected from this tropic environment in a plastic bag will have more value than a 100 peso bill in any jungle on the planet because of the general perception that uh, Benji's will still have considerably more value tomorrow, next month, or even the next uh, 100, uh, next year than the 100 peso note. If risk perceived to be higher than interest rates must compensate for the risk by being much higher for risky currencies, borrows, and investment. The central bank engineered suppression of interest rates has destroyed, I'm gonna repeat this, the central bank's engineered suppression of interest rates has destroyed the market's core mechanism of casually linking risk and the cost of money. Near zero interest rates implies near zero risk. And so this entire 13 year spree of suppressing the cost of money has institutionalized moral hazard. The disconnect of risk and consequences. Uh, some of this might be a little heavy folks, but really it's a superb article. It really explains where we are at today and the importance of owning gold and silver um, uh, to protect your, uh, your wealth here. Again, it's about wealth preservation mostly. Uh, let's move along here. The ultimate artifice, artifice <laughs> of extend and pretend is that risk has been, been vanquished. Overextended and over leveraged borrowers can always roll over their existing debt and borrow more as ever lower rates of interest. In effect, paying interest with new debt. That's what we got going on. Uh, since risk is essentially zero, and uh, again, remember that interest rates were often judged on risk in the past. You know, a higher risk would pay a much higher interest rate, all right? Uh, not anymore. Uh, since risk is essentially zero, then why not make use of the opportunity by gaming the system? The big players who broke the laws against insider trading, selling securities designed to fail, found that global empire debt viewed prosecuting financial crimes as potentially upsetting. So not only did risk fall to zero, so did the consequences of fraud, collusion, and malfeasance. And this is exactly what we got going on in the COMEX markets, folks. Uh, with the uh, uh, COMEX allowing the uh, big uh, uh, commercial banks to uh, hold these huge short positions with no other, in silver and probably gold, with no other reason than to suppress prices and make themselves a fortune. They're not there to hedge, they're not there to speculate, they're there just to use that huge amount of money that they get for virtually nothing to screw uh, most small silver and gold investors and miners out there. Uh, completely illegal, but allowed, in my opinion, completely illegal, but allowed by COMEX, crooked COMEX, owned by the CME group. Don't ever forget that. Pass that around, too. Um, and, uh, uh, and allowed by the, uh, what am I say, they're either complicit or morons, the CFTC, who is under the, uh, uh, under the uh, supervision of the Agriculture Committee. So go figure. Uh, which is a complete inept committee anyway. If you look at the U.S. Federal Agricultural Committee, look at the people on that board. No wonder the CFTC is inept. <laughs> it's, it's actually being uh, watched by inept people or run by inept people as well. Uh, but in my opinion, the CFTC is completely freaking inept or they're complicit with COMEX, allowing them to, uh, to do this kind of stuff. Because as he says here, there's too much money there. Um, central banks, where we are, not only did risk fall to zero, so the consequences of fraud, collusion, and malfeasance, that's what we've got going on. And since the bigger players had unlimited access to bank credit, you know, like JP, 
uh, uh, Bank of America and all these, their bets quickly became so risky, so large that the entire financial system became fragile and vulnerable to cascade and collapse. Central banks and state treasuries were forced to bail out the most egregious criminal firms and ignore the criminality of individuals in those forms, uh, i.e. JP, in my opinion, uh, and uh, Demon and those guys, Jamie Demon and his fucking devils, institutionalizing too big to fail and too big to jail. And that's exactly what we've been talking about for some time. They institutionalized too big to fail, too big to jail. Uh, by the way, I love this guy's uh, articles. You can bookmark this. I would highly suggest you do it. He writes new stuff, and he's spot frickin' on. Uh, the truly interesting thing here is that the stability of any system depends on precisely what central banks have extinguished, a transparent market that price risks with the constraints of consequences. And we've lost that, folks. We no longer uh, have a transparent market that prices risk with constraints and consequences. We, we have uh, too big to jail and too big to fail. Uh, and you have a certain elite amount of money that have access to this money uh, for cheaply and uh, as much as they want. Uh, over the, except for us, <laughs> over the past 13 years, the invulnerability and rewards bestowed on those, huh, here you go, he points it out here, bestowed on those who borrowed to the hilt and then borrowed even more and put all the central bank issued money on leveraged bets has tricked into the consciousness, trickled into the consciousness of retail punters and individuals, household and small scale gamblers, uh, you know, oops, I mean investors, <laughs> he nails it right there, but it's true. Um, it's kind of like, well, if they can do it, uh, we can do it. So, I mean, man, we've got nothing but uh, criminality out there, folks. People trying to screw each other. This whole market is kind of rigged. I've been telling you that for a long time. But again, if you don't play, you can't win. So you just have to know how these games are rigged. Uh, with the real productivity and earnings stagnant and all the gains of gaming, the central bank's suppression of risk flowing to the top 1%, 0.1%, the commoners have now followed the nobility into the casino. Wealth is no longer perceived as flowing from productivity but from speculation and the leaping from one asset bubble to the next. That's a pretty powerful comment, folks. And again, I highly recommend you read this article a second time. And uh, we'll get through this here real quick. Uh, it's a little longer one. I, I wasn't going to read it, but I, it was so good, I, I figured I wanted to read this to you guys. And again, highly recommend you go over it again because he nails it. He nails it. Uh, since increasing productivity cannot be made risk-free while speculation can be made to appear, appear risk-free for a time, all the money and talent has flowed into speculation. The real world rots away as everyone pursues the incentive that the central bank regime have created to game the financial system and speculate as wildly as you can because there's no longer any risk of any asset ever declining again. And he's talking about um, the too big to fails, all right? They can make horrible decisions, highly speculative decisions that uh, uh, could, would normally break a company in the past, uh, but they'll get bailed out or somehow, you know, they get a lot of money to inject into the system and it won't happen. But again, it's all screwed up out there. Uh, the central bank uh, regime incentiv incentivized speculation by rewarding those who borrowed and leveraged the biggest bet. Um, in central bank casino, everyone, it's funny, he calls it a casino as well, everyone who bets on asset bubbles expanding to the sky is a winner. Anyone who took real world risk by investing in the production of goods and services was a loser. And that's pretty sad, folks. That's, uh, that's not the way it should be, and we're going to pay the piper for this uh, globally, not just the United States. Uh, I often refer to the first order and second order uh, effects, and that's the story that will be told in 2022 with explosive results. First order effects, actions have consequences. Second order effects, those consequences have consequences. Um, uh, the first order effects of central bank suppression of rates and risk were spectacularly rewarding. Assets soared to even higher highs, and enough of the flood of new credit reached the masses to spark an orgy of consumption paid not by earnings and productivity, but by debt. Corporations, you, you see the underlying thing here, uh, it's a debt-fueled bubble that we're running. It's no different than the 2008 bubble we had, except it's far, far bigger, far more dangerous. And when this bubble pops, folks, watch out. I'm not even sure that the entire world will be set back into a third world country type effect, but uh, I digress. Uh, corporations, all right. Uh, corporations didn't boost productivity. They borrowed billions and bought back their own shares, reducing the float and thereby generating higher profits per share. But the new incentive structure generated by this destruction of market dynamics destroyed not just price discovery or risk, it also destroyed the foundation of true prosperity. Investing in increasing productivity rather than speculative gains. 
and uh, folks, uh, <laughs> and that's exactly what we're seeing out there. Uh, I mean, take a look at the crypto markets. I'm sorry to add that in. I know some of you are going to be upset about me saying that, but it's true. Uh, we're not. That's investing in speculative gain. That's not investing in productivity. All right. Uh, so we're in the hugest speculative gain bubble of all time, uh, fueled by probably the largest amount of money ever injected into any system of all time. Um, so let me, and I'll show you some charts here when we're done. We're, we're close here. Uh, the Federal Reserve manages to suppress interest rates, but it doesn't control risk or consequences. On the system level, all that central banks accomplished was to transfer all the risk piling up as a consequence of their incentive, incentivizing of speculation to the entire financial system. So they created this whole thing. The Fed's created this whole speculative uh, uh, um, investments. Uh, highly, uh, we're speculating in highly volatile investments that don't really produce anything uh, other than the fact that money gets thrown at it. And it's a Ponzi scheme, folks. That's the best way to describe what we got going on. Uh, it's a Ponzi scheme. Uh, by incentivizing, uh, incentivizing speculation and feeding the belief that assets can, can never decline, the central banks have implicitly made a promise they cannot keep. Consequences have been extinguished along with risk. One of the consequences of incentivizing speculation and backstopping the biggest players' bets is that the biggest players have garnered the vast majority of the gains. The vast differential has generated unprecedented wealth inequality. And again, this is not Marxist bullshit right here. This is not socialist talking about wealth inequality. inequality. This is something that, that uh, even uh, us fiscally conservative responsible people I uh, can see. It does create unprecedented wealth inequality. And basically, it's what we've got going on. It's a crony system. If you're in bed with banks or governments, if you have friends that are banks or governments, or you're in bed with them, or you, you get special, uh, uh, you, you, you get special treatment. And that's exactly what we're going. A few people are making money off this type of thing. So this is not capitalism, folks, that we're seeing right now. This is crony capitalism. This is crony capitalism of uh, endless money printing, the greatest bubble of all time, nothing good. So I can't blame when you see a lot of young people say, well, this is not fair. They're absolutely correct. It's not fair. We're not living in a capitalist society anymore. We're living in a crony capitalist society. And unfortunately, a lot of people that call themselves socialist and progressives don't understand the difference between crony capitalism and free market capitalism. Folks, we haven't been in free market capitalism in decades now. We've been living in crony capitalism, but I digress here again. Uh, 2022, 2022 is the year, oh man, hold on, how far do I got to go here? There we go, okay. 2022 uh, is a year that second order effects come home to roost. All the risk that has been transferred to the financial system as a whole will generate consequences the Fed and other central banks are unable to control, just like the 2008 bubble. Uh, the stupendously toxic incentive to speculate, that's what we got going on. Again, that's exactly what uh, cryptos are, uh, speculative, highly speculative uh, casinos. Uh, they don't produce anything. They don't produce wealth. They don't produce, I mean, they don't produce goods, I'm sorry, uh, or services, all right? Uh, this, it's a Ponzi. And again, that's what we got going on with the rest of the market as well, including Apple. It's a Ponzi. They're, they're not producing any goods that, that, that are super profitable. Uh, it's the uh, endless amount of money being dumped into their system. Uh, the stupendously toxic wealth inequality will generate consequences the Fed and other central banks are unable to control. The, the hubris and magical thinking of central bankers has infected the entire populace, the majority of whom now confuse magical thinking with optimism. The belief that central banks can extinguish risk and consequence and the second order effects of those consequences is magical thinking. Uh, the belief that, and, and this is what corporate media does, they keep up this magical thinking, CNBC, Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, uh, they propagate that shit. Um, and any corporate media does uh, because they're looking out for themselves and their buddies. The belief that asset bubbles will keep expanding because of the omni omnipotence of central banks is magical thinking. The belief that prosperity is the result of shifting bets from one gaming table to the next is magical thinking. The belief that central banks have godlike powers and nothing can limit their power is magical thinking. Uh, man, this guy is spot on. Uh, the funny thing about system dynamics is they don't respond to what we like, want, or believe. Believing that central banks can make the financial system and economy do whatever they want doesn't mean they actually have that power. Believing the second order effects have been extinguished doesn't mean they've actually been extinguished. What will surprise us in 2022 is the exposure of central banks' limits of power and the explosive consequences of the second order effects. 
What seemed so permanent for 13 years will be revealed as shifting sand, and what seemed so real for 13 years will be revealed as an illusion. Magical thinking is an optimism. Optimism, it's folly. Uh, excellent article here um, uh, by Mr. Uh, uh, Hughes here, and uh, he, cuts, he puts some uh, graphs down here. Uh, stable system, visible system, uh, we are here. Uh, we, it looks like, according to him, it looks like we're on the uh, edge of a uh, irrecoverable uh, uh, crash here coming up here. And, and again, that's what everyone's talking about. Everyone's expecting this, but it's magical thinking, thinking it's not going to happen or we're thinking it's going to happen long enough after we're gone. Just look at these graphs, folks. Here is the uh, M2 graph right here. I just did since 2008. Look at this. They've never fixed a damn thing. Look at, the, uh, look at this, the M2. And at, here, 2020. And here's the uh, Critter 19 they're going to blame it on. But the fact is, you know, 2019, here's that big repo problem where they had to inject billions and billions into the repo system to make sure the banks were still going to be okay. Uh, and then you got this right here. So they're going to try to blame it on the Critter 19. But the fact is, folks, take a look at this line since 2008. They did nothing. They fixed nothing. All they did was pump more plasma into it. Take a look at this line since 2008 to date. This is the uh, purchasing power consumer dollar of the U.S. average city. 2008, they fixed nothing, folks. In fact, they're taking your dollar and making it worth less and less. So you think that, you know, you, you made a couple percent <laughs> this year, you make 5% on your investments, and the fact the dollar drops, your, your purchasing power, the drop 10%. You're a loser at 5% per year. Let that happen continually. You'll be broke. Uh, folks, what they tell you and what the truth is, does not match with the data and the facts. There you go. Since 2008, fixed nothing. Since 2008, the, 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 you know, the buying power of the dollar, they have fixed nothing, folks. In fact, they've created a bigger scenario for one of the largest bubbles of all time, which is completely going to change this entire earth. <laughs> I really believe that. And uh, what has been around, what has out, outlived uh, all these uh, uh, bankers? What has outlived central bankers? What's outlived corporations? What's outlived empires and countries? Gold and silver, folks. This is why we talk about this stuff. Good thing to own. All right, so I'm, all, I'm done with that rant. <laughs> Let's take a look at uh, ZH real quick, and I'll go over a few articles. Uh, Vince did a good article. He's got some uh, podcasts uh, where he talks about nobody has made money buying Bitcoin since the ETF was listed. This is something that I spoke about when the ETFs were being created. Uh, I was talking about cryptos, uh, that Bitcoin, it was pretty much over for Bitcoin when Wall Street got involved with it, when the whales got involved with it. And that's basically what kind of Vince has been saying here. Since they got involved with it, it's... Uh, it's done. <laughs> it's toast, in my opinion. Um, it's going to be just a glorified money market account at best, uh, since, you know, that, that's my opinion. Good article, though. If you got zero hit, well, I got zero hits, you can read zero hits for free. Uh, go to ZH today and, and listen to Vince's podcast. Pretty darn good. Um, and let's just keep a see. Oh, wow. Looks like we, they, they got rid of one idiot just to replace them with another idiot here. Take a look at that. Fucking people don't learn, do they? Uh, by the way, like I said, did anyone see that Joe Rogan interview this week? That was pretty amazing. Uh, what will surprise us in 2022? Oh, this is the uh, article. Oh, let me show you to his, give me one second. Uh, I wanted to show you his Earl. You can read his stuff for free. He takes uh, donations. Oh, sorry about that. And uh, Charles Hugh Smith uh, of two minds.com is the name of his site. He writes some really good stuff, folks. I'd highly recommend you uh, bookmark this on your bookmark bar and uh, read his stuff when it comes out. You'll be smarter than the average bear for doing it. Also, if you get a chance, I believe that he does take donations. He writes his stuff for free. So if you get a chance, make a donation to uh, Mr. Smith if you like his stuff. Uh, let's go back over to, where are we? Where are we? I was at Zero Hedge going down here. I'm going to just kind of make some comments. You know my snarky comments on politics and economics. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, the rich, the super rich, the super uh, left liberal rich, now all of a sudden see a reason to, uh, to do this kind of stuff. My God, the irony behind this is just insane. Uh, that does not surprise me at all. I think we're going to find out that uh, your health and your uh, immunity, your, your health and how you treat your body has a lot to do with how your immunity system works or your immune system works. And euphoria, oh God, it keeps going up and up and up. When is this thing going to crash? We don't know. Uh, but gosh, it sure seems like it, was, it seemed like it was going to be last year and the year before. But no, no. All right. Well, I don't think there's too much to talk about here when it comes to uh, gold and silver. Just the same old news. It looks like they found 
her guilty of four of the 11 charges, and probably rightfully so. I mean, think about it. She took people's hard-earned money. You know, people invested in that lady. Not unlike uh, us gold and silver investors who, who uh, get screwed by comics every day or the uh, big players in comics that comics allows to screw us. Um, I don't think they'll go to jail. They're too big to jail and too big to fail, but obviously she was not. And let's move down here. She must have screwed someone that was too big to jail and too big to fail. That's the only reason she's going to jail. Uh, sorry about that. Let me, again, not too much to talk about here. It's good articles always on uh, ZH, and uh, I could make this video very long if I start discussing them. Yesterday's video, i um, like to thank everybody that watched it. Make sure you click and hit the subscribe button. Uh, I'd like to thank the Reddit folks for watching as well. I know some of you guys, some of you silver apes out there watch my videos, and I appreciate it very much. Um, and uh, if you're not a Reddit uh, Wall Street ape and you are a stacker, you are a silver stacker, it's a pretty cool site. I highly recommend that you uh, uh, go and subscribe to this. It's, uh, again, very mostly just talks about silver and uh, a lot of people posting pictures and cool memes and things like that. It's yeah, kind of a very fun site. Uh, how come that's not pulling up? Ooh, a little slow today. All right, I'm going to move into uh, yesterday's video, which is both at Too Big to Fail. It was a 15-minute video. I can't believe I did a video that short. Uh, but I've been super busy. I've got the fun show coming up this week in Orlando. I'll be up there. I forget what table I'm at. I'm on row 500, I think, or something like that. Uh, commercial rare coins and precious metals. Uh, my father won't be up there. He's Florida Currency and Coins, so I'll be at his table as well. Uh, the sign will probably say Florida Currency and Coins. So uh, come and see me if you're in Orlando. I'll be there uh, uh, Thursday and Friday. And uh, uh, come by and see me. I, I can yeah, introduce yourself. Well, uh, let's talk, and that's why I've been so busy, man. That's why this show is short. I can't believe it. I did a long one today. I'm so behind. Uh, let's take a look at any comments. Thank you for watching, everyone. Make sure you hit that subscribe and like button. I do appreciate it. Um, and, of course, all, you all know who you are. I, the people that comment uh, frequently on here, I really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. And I'm just seeing if there's any questions I can answer here. Uh, again, I'd like to acknowledge everyone here that's posting, especially some of the new uh, posters out here. And not too many questions here, so I'm going to skip off real quickly. Uh, let me just kind of acknowledge everybody here again. Thank you for watching. I'm going to skip off real quickly and uh, call it a day here. Uh, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Um, call them, if you live in my area in South Florida, uh, call us anytime at 954-493-8811. Uh, we're open 10 to 4 Monday through Fridays. Happy to tell you what the best deals are and uh, give you any advice that you need. Uh, unfortunately, we don't do any shipping. We don't have an online business. So if you don't live in my state, in my area, and you can't come and visit me and buy from our brick and mortar store, uh, I highly advise that you find yourself a good local dealer you can work with, even if you have to drive an hour or two to do it, um, rather than buying on, from the online guys. I advertise to beat Atmex, JM, uh, and SD Bullion, uh, JM Bullion being the 800-pound gorilla amongst the three of them there. Uh, but I advertise to beat them on their uh, uh, lower end, not lower end, but the uh, more reasonable price products. Um, they, they have products on there that I would never sell you, uh, therefore I, say, I can't say I'm competitive with because they're overpriced to begin with, in my opinion. Nothing wrong with them because uh, JM, again, they have good prices on their stuff, but your local dealer, like me, should be able to uh, beat their prices and give you a better deal. Plus, you get face-to-face -face service when you're dealing with someone local rather than online. Well, that's really about it. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, again, this week's videos uh, for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are probably going to be a lot shorter. Uh, maybe I'll try to do something at the uh, coin show in Orlando. It's called the Florida United Numismatist Show, and uh, I'll be there on Thursday and Friday for any of you folks in Orlando that want to come by and say hi. Well, that's really about it. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.